Hi, this is Dr. Jeff, the Rocky Mountain Vet. I want to talk to you about something really important to me, and that is the state of veterinary medicine in America. Uh, you know, reuse uses like pandemic, supply line chain issues for a great rise in prices, and there's been an incredible rise in prices across America. And that is part of it, but a bigger part of it is simple, and that is Wall Street has invested in veterinary hospitals. Nothing wrong with that. I believe in competition. I, I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. But what has happened, a lot less competition, as groups are buying up clinics, um, well, you think about it. They have the owner of the clinic, and now they have a board of directors. There's a tier system of bureaucrats in between. And guess what? Your, your uh, shareholders want profit. So automatically, prices are doubling, tripling, quadrupling. I mean, it's just it's crazy what's going on. Uh, and, and I don't see that changing because vet practices are good business and we do not fail. Uh, it's really rare for a practice to go out of business. So we're a great investment. And in the end though, what is gonna end, what's gonna happen is the prices keep rising. And there's a really good article, uh, very extensive by the Boca Foundation. This was Bob Christensen did this, a lot of research in this, a lot of uh, facts and figures, um, economic. And it, it's about the state of health of veterinary medicine in America. And what we found, what he found, he presented to the AVMA, AVMA is not interested. AHA, the Online Hospital Association, is not interested because they all profit from what's going on. Um, but in the end, we, we, are, we are not addressing the basic needs of something like 60% of animals in America. So only 40% of people currently living in this country can afford curtain veterinary prices. Well, you ask why that is. Part of it is the Wall Street thing, but part of it is also we've taken human medicine and shifted over to animal medicine. Nothing wrong with that. If you can go get an EKG or a CT scan, uh, you know, if you can get a kidney transplant or a heart pacemaker in your animal, I don't have a problem with that. It's cool stuff, but someone has to pay for it. And the problem is boards, state boards across America keep raising the standard to the point where the average nonprofit and the average veterinarian can't do certain things. They don't want you to do certain things. They want everything to be like in human medicine. You send it out, it's specialized, you send it, you know, everything away, which is just ridiculous. I got all kinds of surgical books. I can look in a book, look at the surgery, and go do the surgery, you know, and I feel very comfortable with that. Now, I obviously say I'm not a specialist. I tell my clients that. I try to send them to a specialist, but if there's no other option, why would I send the animal away or kill it? And that's where we're at. Right? If you can't afford $5,000 or $10,000, I just have a cat come in with a $20,000 quote for an explorer. I had a dog yesterday that had a, a, a lump. Uh, it was basically a foreign object in the stomach. It took me 40 minutes to go in, take it out of the stomach. I charged $1,200 and almost felt guilty, but they've been quoted five to 9,000 for the same surgery. And I'm sorry, whoever was gonna do that surgery is not that, but it can't be that much better of a surgery than I because I've done thousands of these things. Um, it, it's, it's something has to change. This is a dog chasing its tail with no end. Prices can't keep going up and people, you know, where people just have to euthanize. Economic euthanasia is a reality. That's a bigger threat to animals, pet animals in America than overpopulation at this point. The Humane Societies, as always, because they're bureaucratic, are slow to change. They need to change. They need to be open up full service, low cost hospitals across this nation. And, and between the top eight to 10 humane societies, they're sitting on like a billion dollars. There's no reason they can't open clinics all across this nation. They choose not to. They'd rather build new $34 million shelters, or even though there's less animals in shelters than ever before. You know, when I was in school, we were killing 24 to 26 million dog and cats a year in this country, and I graduated in 89. At this point in time, depending on who you read, it's more like two to four million. Some people say one to two million. It's definitely a lot, lot lower. We, we're definitely not killing 20 million that we did in the past, which is a major accomplishment. That's due to spay neuter. It's not because of the veterinary profession, and it's not because of the humane society. It's because of the American people demanded it. We want these things. And once again, the free market supplied it. The free market has to supply at this point, low cost, full service, veterinary hospitals for the retired military, for the little old lady and the little old man on a fixed income, for the single mom with two kids. There's no reason people like that have to kill their animals or can't even see a veterinarian. There's areas in this country where 76% of the animals never see a vet in a lifetime. That is a failure of the American Veterinary Medical Association. It's a failure of society. And it really bothers me. 
I don't know how, how <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know how this is all gonna end, but I know this. The Boca Foundation is just one group, and this Bob Christensen's group, he, his goal is to establish two full service hospitals, basically surgical hospitals, in every state across this country. And I'm gonna back him 110%. I'm gonna do whatever I can do to help that. I'm willing to train veterinarians. In the near future, we're gonna be opening our training facility up in Conifer, Colorado. Uh, and in that facility, my goal, we've worked, right now we've worked with six different vet schools. I like to get that up to 26 different vet schools. But my goal is to train these young vets and how to do things in a good, efficient, proper way. It has no negative effect on the animals, yet it's a third of the price of what everybody else is charging. You can do it. You, you can't be afraid of work. I mean, I'm 66 and I still work 50, 60 hours a week. I don't always wish I did have to, but um, I'm dedicated to what I do. And uh, I, believe, I believe in the common sense nature of Americans. And in the end, we have to demand that things change. Do not give to your local humane societies unless they have a, a low-cost spay neuter clinic, unless they have facilities available for you to take your animals. It makes no sense because just warehousing animals and adopting them is not the answer. You know, if you have a local vet that will help you, you know, subsidize them, help them any way you can. You know, uh, in the end, I don't have a problem with veterinarians making good money, but at the same time, new grads are starting out because what's happened is we have a, a veterinary shortage, so because so many, so many Wall Street groups are buying clinics, they have to have veterinarians in the clinic. They're outbidding each other for the veterinary clinics, which means basically, as a nonprofit, I can't afford a new veterinarian. I can't start a new grad at 165000 They can't find their ass in the dark. So how can I pay them 165000 But if I go into corporate, it's not a problem. I put something in the computer, it tells me what to do. It's, it's textbook, it's, it's boring, and bottom line is, if you don't have the money, you, it doesn't matter anyway, it sends you out the door. Uh, I'm tired of animals being euthanized just because they can't be fixed when they can be. You know, it's a broken leg or whatever. Uh, you know, and we have one of the highest suicide rates, one of the highest burnout rates. Well, maybe the AVMA need to ask why that is. Why is a young vet graduate, an idealistic young woman, and most new grads are young women, that actually have some compassion and they take a job and every other animal they have to send out or euthanize. That's, that's what they do. They just send them. And unfortunately, a lot of them send to us, which keeps us crazy busy. We can't keep up. Uh, I do believe that the, the, some of the kids in the classes coming up are, have a different attitude and they definitely want to get into some of the lower cost work, uh, some of the more humane work. But I literally get calls every week asking me for help from all over this country. I need veterinarians, I need spay neuter veterinarians, I need full service veterinarians. Can you do something for us? Um, I can barely keep up here. You know, my eyes are just above water. Uh, and, and quite frankly, if I had 10 more vets, I could keep them busy, you know, but it, it's tough in this day and age. I absolutely believe something has to give. I don't know what it's gonna be, but please, if you're gonna donate money, donate to groups that make a difference. Make sure they have a spay neuter, make sure they, uh, spay neuter facility. Make sure they have, you have options to maybe get some other surgeries done. Make sure they're doing feral cat trapping. You know, as a humane organizations, as humane people, as animal people, we make the difference by how we give our money. You can demand a change and you will get it. I believe in you, I hope you believe in me. This is Dr. Jeff signing off. I don't like to get too political, but I'll just say I'm today. Take care.